Fully loaded with information, warfare, weapons. We are over the target. The military industrial complex owned by the big criminal offshore banks trying to destroy human free society and on its ashes build their world government. We are resisting it big time. Thank you so much for joining us. It is Tuesday, the first day of February 2011. And we're going to be live here for the next three hours. Dr. Sherry Tenpenny pops in later in the next hour with an update on flu vaccines and other vaccines and adverse reaction reports all over the world. Uh, David Icke, uh, to give us his interesting perspective, joins us in the third hour on what's happening with the global economy, what's going on in the Middle East. Uh, in Jordan, the monarchy has replaced the government in reaction to protest. Uh, that, again, is a big ally of the uh, West. Uh, so there is certainly a real rebellion going on here. And I think what's really happening is the West has got its pre-placed people knowing that there's rebellion against all of these dictatorial uh, regimes. And so that once the rebellion starts, they can then try to channel it uh, into a new puppet, meet the new boss, same as the old boss, similar to the uh, two-party system uh, that we have here. But I th certainly there's real reasons for people to be revolting, and that is the economic uh, deprivation that's going on, uh, predominantly over dollar devaluation uh, globally driving up food prices on a planetary scale. So we're going to be discussing all of that today, the latest on what's happening in Egypt. Uh, we're also going to get into people like the new governor, uh, of California says that they must raise taxes or California could go the way uh, of uh, what's happening in Egypt. It's actually over taxation that's hurting California. No one can uh, deny that and causing people to flee the state like they're fleeing Michigan, uh, New York and other uh, big tax and spend areas uh, like Illinois. So we're going to be breaking uh, that down today. Uh, also, there's an interesting article here out of the San Diego uh, news today, and its document shows safety concerns, slowed fluoridation, and reading uh, this article, basically there is a rebellion uh, going on inside the San Diego government, this is out of the San Diego Union Tribune, their big paper, where their own scientists are saying, don't put this in the water, you know it's toxic, you know it's dangerous, and so there's been an internal fight inside the city and that's why they're several months late uh, on putting this stuff into the water supply but because of federal funds greasing the skids they're going ahead with that and speaking of health care obviously judge rules against health care law yesterday and cites in his 70 plus page uh, paper in the ruling Obama on CNN and other debates uh, but predominantly a CNN debate where Obama said hey we can't make people get health care you know, can we make people buy houses so they're not going to be homeless? Uh, and the judge went on to say, yeah, can you make people eat broccoli? Well, that's what this authoritarianism is. If they can tell you what type of toilet you're going to have, if they can tell you what type of light bulb you're going to have, sounds reasonable, then it's what type of house you can live in, how many children you can have, how much carbon dioxide you can exhale. This is the authoritarian 21st century model of all of this. And so that's coming up as well. Obviously, we have this up at InfoWars.com. It's also up on Drudge Report. Uh, Chucky Schumer came out uh, a couple days ago and said that there are three branches of government. The House, uh, the Senate, and the Executive. Of course, that's two branches of government. He listed the legislative as, as and, and, and bifurcated it into two two branches of government along with the executive and ignored the, ju uh, the judicial. So we're going to be getting into that clip. Also, uh, the environmentalists, the fake environmentalists, are running around claiming the freezing weather is a response uh, to global warming. But don't worry, you can pay them taxes. Welcome, my friends. Welcome again. Thank you for joining us. It is the first day of February 2011 on this Tuesday edition. Dr. Sherry Tenpenny will be popping in for about 15, 20 minutes at the start of the next hour to give us an update on some of the vaccine uh, reactions that are happening and the latest on the globalist attempt 
to establish forced inoculation all across uh, this country, but also worldwide. And the rest of the broadcast uh, will be dealing with news and information. There is a lot of it. Uh, first off, I want to get into Obama and the government health care plan. And I want to go back to a video during the debates with Hillary uh, where he said, look, you can't make people buy health insurance just like you can't make people buy uh, a home so they won't be homeless. And you can't have penalties on people. Well, he went ahead and, of course, later went along with all that. But the federal judge uh, in this latest ruling uh, cited Obama's own statements. And the judge went on to say you can't make people eat broccoli. I mean, if the government can do this, they can make you eat broccoli. Well, that's the whole point. They are deciding what type of light bulbs we can have, what type of toilets. They're openly saying they want to decide how many kids we can have. This is the nature of a command and control plan society, command and controlled society. Uh, also, uh, they have the Federation of American Scientists, and the woman could hardly say it with a straight face uh, on CNN uh, saying uh, that uh, the freezing weather we're seeing as a result of global warming and all of the evil carbon dioxide uh, that we're putting into the atmosphere, uh, that's coming up. We have Chucky e. Schumer not knowing the three branches of government. You know, I tend to think he does know the three branches, but, but they like to practice ignorance out in front of everyone, basically washing the public's minds in disinformation. It's It's part of the globalist religion to put out disinfo and to keep uh, the general public in the dark so that we just swim in a sea of disinformation uh, so that we're confused and uh, can't ever wrest control uh, of society away from these bloodthirsty uh, control freaks. So that is all coming up uh, as well. Uh, obviously, we're going to be getting into the Egypt uh, situation and uh, the one the only David Icke will be live with us uh, in the last hour. Uh, of the broadcast today. But first, I wanted to get into some very good news. And this is out of the major newspaper uh, in San Diego. And the San Diego newspaper, the San Diego Union Tribune, uh, has the headline here, Documents Show Safety Concerns Slowed Floridation. Now, the headline should be Revolt Within the City. Because as you read deeper into the article, uh, it says that scientists and people working in the health department were concerned uh, about uh, the fact that EPA scientists, FDA scientists have testified in Congress. Uh, they admit children are getting way too much fluoride, that it's in the food, that it's in, it's used as a pesticide on the different crops and that we're bioaccumulating it, and that it's very, very toxic, and that the type of fluoride they're putting in the water uh, is toxic. But the article kind of spins it that, well, what's happened here is there were some safety concerns, and so this was supposed to happen a few months ago, but now, now San Diego, uh, the biggest city in the U.S. to not fluoridate, they're moving to put it in. San Antonio only put fluoride in six, seven years ago. I mean, the people there aren't stupid. It's taken the government since the 1950s until now to fluoridate 71% of this country. Just a few years ago, it was 68%. And they've got close to 70% in England fluoridated. They've got more than half in Germany fluoridated. Uh, and, and again, it's not because they care about you. It reduces fertility. It causes brain damage. Uh, it causes bone cancer. This is not debated. The government admits this. But they hope you don't look into it. But think about how we have these facts. And all we've got to do is continue to present them at city council, present them at county commissioners, present them at the state houses, and turn the power of the grassroots loose against the big uh, chemical company lobbies who would have to store all this toxic waste. But voila, they sell it to you as a health benefit, and now they don't have to store the toxic waste. They can put it directly into your water. And what's so deadly about sodium fluoride from the medical doctors we've talked to and the endocrinologists and others is that it's an adjuvant. It accelerates and supercharges all the other toxins and chemicals and free radicals and Grignard reagents uh, that are already in the water that are added along with the sodium fluoride. That's another big hoax. You're told this is pharmacological, you know, pharma-grade 
uh, fluoride, sodium fluoride. No, it's not. And you do need just tiny trace amounts of calcium fluoride. Uh, you need tiny trace amounts of lead and mercury. These are way above those tiny, tiny trace amounts, and it's a key compound that bioaccumulates over time in the tissues, in the organs, and the bones. Uh, but you can go read this article. Utility officials said the slowdown highlights how the safety system worked, though the documents suggest some city leaders were disturbed by the timing of the deferral. Uh, San Diego was three days away from starting fluoridation in December uh, 22nd when senior operator and supervisor Jim McVeigh said the schedule had precluded hands-on training by system operators before the process went live. And uh, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention recently updated information about the fluoridation of water. Uh, saying that it actually causes dental fluorosis and should be cut from one 0.2 parts per million to 0 0.7 parts. Uh, so they're certainly starting uh, to back off on that front. So uh, good news there. And the people in San Diego just continue to put pressure on government and get the facts out. You can reverse this. They've tried to just laugh at people for 60 years who bring up the medical science. It was scientists and doctors that brought it up back in the 50s and said it was dangerous. And they've been laughing at us for all these decades, but now the mountains of evidence are crushing their lies. And so victory is in our hands if we just take it. Now, speaking of health care, what it's like to have a government uh, controlled by big banks that own the insurance companies who wrote the health care law to make 30 plus million Americans buy their overpriced products. That's what this was really all about. But then they wrap it in a socialist uh, you know, loving veneer so that people believe that uh, who are on the left that they're actually helping someone. But the truth is the big banks that own the insurance companies on record wrote the health care plan. They wrote it. They created it. And they pushed it out there, and it's got mandates to give you multi-thousand dollar a year fines if you don't go out and get it, to attach your paycheck. And it allows uh, the big insurance companies uh, that control the HMOs to write policy with a com through a computer telling your doctor, your dentist, what procedure they can do. So the bureaucracy diagnosing you in quote cost cutting once they show socialize things once they get us dependent on each other then they can have social control they can say what you can eat what you can drink then now they've got to monitor you because you're part of the collective and why your behavior is costing other people money that's one of the big pitfalls of collectivism and then it always pushes this surveillance grid and then they can bring in the one child policies then they can uh, bring in uh, the death panels, the case for killing granny. Out of one side of their mouth, they say there's none of that going on. Out of the other side, uh, side uh, Newsweek, Time Magazine, New Yorker Magazine, uh, Bill Gates, Ted Turner. Yeah, kill granny, hire 10 teachers. They're selling you the collectivist model that if somebody uh, dies, you get ahead. So it's a cannibalistic worldview. I mean, I hear liberals, mainline liberals all the time on talk radio saying the pie is this big and doesn't get any bigger. And so if, if you're going to get ahead, somebody else has got to lose. And why if there are these ultra rich people with this much of the pie, why that means it's taking away from your pie. As long as wealthy people have free market systems and actually hire people and actually produce products or ideas or services, it actually grows the economy. That's basic economics, and the globalists know that. But it is the super robber baron elite who have always waged war against the middle class, against the merchant class, against the uh, shopkeeper class, against the cobbler uh, class, people you know made shoes and clothes in their own little shops, because they can become independently successful and independent of the system and now they don't need a letter of mark and if you look at say bass beer it says the um, oldest uh you, you know official uh copyright in england and you actually look at that mark for bass ale and it's a letter from the queen an authorization in 16 something i don't have one of the beers in front of me uh to be able to brew beer you you had to get a license from the queening. 
Now, how powerful does that make the queen? That to be able to brew beer, you've got to have her authorization. To be able to take your ship out of the bay into the English Channel to engage in trade, you've got to have a license. To be able to fix your house, you've got to have a license. To be able to grow crops, you get a license specifically for what you can grow under feudalism. Oh, you're in with the king, you're in with the king of federal government, you're in with the titular head, the figurehead of the banking imperium, Barack Obama. Oh, you're McDonald's or you're the big uh, uh, lobbying groups, uh, you're the big... Uh, Unions, oh, you get waivers from the health care. You don't have to pay for health care for your employees, but everybody else does. Again, everything that is old is new again. Everything that is new is old. Everything we're seeing has been done over and over and over and over again, and we know what it is. It starts with a T, a big T, a capital T, and uh, no, it's not Tyrannosaurus Rex. The tyrant lizard, a terrible lizard, but it's a something a very similar. It's called tyranny, and it's called mob rule uh, by a mafia criminal syndicate. And if you want to be able to wipe your nose or get married, you've got to get a license to do it. This is not land of the free. The dependency game, the feudalism game, is very simple. Special interest, go in, buy off the government and then have the government mandate that the people basically pay taxes directly to those private interests. All over the U.S., foreign interests come in, buy off the politicians, have toll roads put on existing roads, and levy taxes directly on the citizenry. And that's what the Health Care Act is. But the Republicans would not attack it from truth. They attacked it and claimed it was communism which is bad enough. No, it was fascism written by the insurance companies, owned by the big banks, forcing 30 to 34 million, depending on what numbers you look at, to go out and buy this. But then insiders, they don't have to purchase it. Again, an unfair trade advantage, the essence of tyranny. How are we a free society if the government can order us to get health insurance? Can the government, as the federal judge pointed out, make us buy a home to end homelessness? We're going to play part of the clip uh, from the debate in 2008 with Barack Obama, uh, Barry Sotero, and uh, Hillary Rodham Clinton, uh, where he basically brought up that very point, and that's what the judge, uh, Roger Vinson, uh, put in his 70-plus page, 78-page uh, ruling uh, yesterday. And it, 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 it's very fundamental. You know, this supposed free society was only free to a certain extent for a little over 100 years. And since then, they've been steadily eroding it. We didn't have property taxes until the last 60 years or so. And now all over the country, they're raising property taxes where people can't even own homes. I mean, it's becoming insane. A small home of $100,000, even in rural areas. I've seen the numbers. You've seen them. You've lived it. You know, they may put a $5,000, $10,000 fee on that. You're paying rent on your home. These are things that unfree nations have always had. And we have to recognize that what made this country so wealthy is being dismantled. But let's go ahead and play the clip of Obama in the debate with Hillary. And then a year later, he starts trying to ram through the health care law, which they successfully got through last year, which does have the fines if you don't get health care, which does force you to get the health care, which does everything he said was so bad. And the judge has rightly put this in his ruling, pointing out the blatant hypocrisy. Here it is. Again, what did candidate Obama say about mandated insurance during the Democratic debates? And here is that clip. Uh, Senator Clinton has a different approach. She believes that we have to uh, force people who don't have health insurance to buy it. Otherwise, there will be a lot of people who don't get it. I don't see those folks. And I think that it is important for us to recognize that if, in fact, you're going to mandate uh, the purchase of insurance and it's not affordable, then there's going to have to be some enforcement mechanism that the government uses. And they may charge people who already don't have health care fines or have to take it out of their paychecks. And that, I don't think, is helping those without health insurance. That is a genuine difference. But now, what does he say about the health care law? Well, now, the health care law that they passed 
does have the fines and fees and does persecute people who don't get it. Now, remember Hillary at the time, even though we had the legislation that she'd proposed back in the mid-90s, even though we had the legislation that the Democrats were already promoting that said $5,000 fees, uh, garnishing of wages, she said that it wasn't true, hoping that you wouldn't go read the bill. Well, what is now law in this country? What are they now preparing to try to implement in the next two years? It takes time to phase it in as it's fought through the courts. They're trying to put exactly what they said they weren't going to do into place. And Obama, in the same debate, went on again to say, and it was a good line, it was a zinger, but now it's being used back against him. He said, look, if I mandated as president everyone buy a house, would that end homelessness? How do you make someone buy a house who doesn't have the money to buy a house? Most Americans don't have the money uh, to buy a house unless they go to some you know, rural place where you can you know, maybe buy a house for thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 that's got the roof falling in on it. I, I mean, how do they do this? How, how do they try to force this? And it's, it's completely unconstitutional on its face because if they can make you buy health care, then the federal government can do anything. And speaking of doing anything, it isn't up on PrisonPlanet.com yet, but Watson called me this morning, and it's going to be up on PrisonPlanet.com very, very soon, and you better believe we're going to cover it here. I know it's old news for this audience, but it's new news that they're actually rolling it out. Uh, the TSA, via the Viper teams, is establishing warrantless checkpoints on major highways all over the United States and rolling out nationwide a full federal power grab of the infrastructure of the country, a, a, a power grab of the right to travel, the right of passage, the right to engage in commerce, a brazen violation of the Tenth Amendment, states' rights, and the Fourth Amendment. Uh, and uh, we've got uh, video reports uh, of police in ski masks running random checkpoints all over the country, pulling people out of their cars. This is tyranny. We're going to be getting into stand the record cold the temperatures and Hill, record in at least the last four decades of the media is reporting snowfall over much of the United States and that huge blanket of snow burying the East Coast has been buried now at least three times in the last two months. And incredibly, the media is spinning this that it's carbon dioxide that's causing it and that it's humans. This is global warming. Uh, supposedly, that is coming up. Uh, also, we're going to be getting into this later in the hour. TSA invades roads and highways with Viper checkpoints. TSA invades roads and highways with Viper checkpoints. Absolute, complete, classical tyranny. The seizure of infrastructure, but they will not control our southern and northern borders. They have uh, n you know, never completed even small parts of the border fence, and of course they canceled and never really began constructing. It was all show, the virtual fence. Meanwhile, Henry Kissinger, this video from Bloomberg is up at PrisonPlanet.com. Kissinger on Egypt unrest. This, this is only the first scene of the first act of a drama that is to be played out. So we're going to be uh, getting into that as well. But uh, getting first into Chucky e. Schumer, now, this is a U.S. senator, before that a member of the House of Representatives. This is a guy who is very smart and no doubt knows that the three branches of government, as any five-year-old should know, are executive, legislative, and judicial. The executive is the president, the legislative is the House and Senate, and, of course, the judicial is the courts. But he says that they've got to get the three branches of government together. When uh, he was on CNN a few days ago, they've got to get the three branches of government together. And what are those three branches? The House, the Senate, and the President. Well, that's only two branches. He counts the legislative as two. Uh, so incredible. Uh, and he knows what he's doing. They just engage in this type of, of baloney, just like, like parrots for decades. They say we're a democracy. In a democracy, if 51% of the American people vote to take the other 49% of the people's property and put you in slave camps, it happens. In a democracy, if 51% vote to take your guns, it happens. In a democracy, if 51% vote to merge with China, it happens. 
in a democracy if 51 percent uh, vote to put carbon taxes on everyone? It happens. In a republic, a constitutional republic that our country has been the model of worldwide in the last 235 years, the model of liberty, you have basic liberties to private property, the Second Amendment, the right to travel, the federal government isn't allowed to take over society. It only has three powers, and those are limited, Ninth and Tenth Amendment. And so it's so fundamental when they tell you that we're a democracy, as Benjamin Franklin said, two wolves and a sheep voting on what's for dinner. If there were two wolves and a sheep and they sat down and said, what's going to be for dinner? The two wolves would outvote the sheep and they would eat, eat the sheep. But in a republic, the sheep is protected. Uh, but now in this quasi-fake mob rule, the system hypes up the dumbed-down masses and gets them to feel entitled and to go along with an agenda of free health care. Remember all the Obama supporters? Oh, thank you, Mr. President. Right after you got elected, I won't have to buy health care anymore. I won't have to have a house payment. I won't have to have a car payment. Oh, thank you, Mr. Pre Remember all of them falling down, fainting everywhere? Well, we're two years into this nightmare. Did you get all the free goodies you were looking for? Again, the Founding Fathers warned of the dangers of the howling mob. In, in, once Rome fell from being a republic uh, to being run uh, by the Caesar, he began to give welfare to the mob. He began to employ uh, the street gangs. He began to hire through successive kings, Caesars, rulers, Kaisers. And you know what Rome turned into. We know where this goes. We know. You go to Egypt. If you don't have the government's stamp, you don't get to have a business. This isn't what a free society looks like. And I know I keep repeating that, but it's amazing. Here is Chucky e. Schumer telling everybody the three branches of government are the House, the Senate, and the President. And there's no way he didn't know what he was doing. Here it is. To get Social Security checks, uh, he can't fund the military. But ultimately, it risks... Uh, the credit markets, they are getting wary because of the large debt we have, which we have to get down. But if they feel that people are willing to shut down the government, um, you could risk the credit markets really losing some confidence uh, in the United States uh, Treasury. And that could create uh, a deeper recession than we had uh, over the last several years. Uh, God forbid, even a depression. So I would urge my Republican colleagues, uh, no matter how strongly they feel, you know, we have three branches of government. We have a House, we have a Senate, we have a President, and all three of us are going to have to come together and give some. But it is playing with fire to risk the shutting down of the government, just as it is playing with fire to risk not paying the debt. Okay, yeah, playing with fire. Uh, this is all part of their disinformation campaign. Now, this next clip uh, is also from CNN. And uh, first, let me get into this news that's a prelude to what we're about to play. Uh, this is uh, out of AFP. Senators vow to strip Obama climate power. Well, they have to because he's illegitimately, through the Environmental Protection Agency, implementing the Kyoto UN Treaty Protocol, which is selective only on Western Europe, Canada, England, Australia, New Zealand, and the U.S., to slap giant 20% taxes to begin with in phase one on all of our power plants, coal-fired, natural gas, you name it. And more than half our power is generated by coal. Now, China's building two to three a week. We're only allowed to build two a year under federal permitting. Now, what has Obama done? He's come into Texas a month ago and seized uh, the uh, power plants in a regulatory order, demanding that they either reduce output or pay higher taxes. No law behind that. The president is just doing it, just like they're doing so many other things that are unconstitutional. And conservative senators vowed to strip President Obama of his power to regulate greenhouse gases in a move that would cripple U.S. efforts on climate change if successful. Got to love how the news just reports climate change. See, it was global warming, now it's change. And they tell school kids when it gets cold, it's global warming. When it gets hot, it's global warming. Now they've shifted into climate change. We always have climate change. They've had several mini ice ages in the last 10,000 years. 
That's confirmed by the ice core samples. It's the sun that drives it and moon cycles because the moon controlling the ocean tides and also blocking or not blocking, depending on where it is, solar winds. It's the winds of space and the sun and these energies that ionize the atmosphere that create the aurora borealis. But the UN, back in 2009, about a year and two months ago, announced it at the summit in Copenhagen, they had a declaration and said the sun has no effect on climate because all these scientific bodies and scientists were bringing in petitions saying it's the sun, it's the sun. Humans have almost no effect. It's the sun. It's the sun. Carbon dioxide's a life-giving gas that then plants respirate from and give off oxygen. And so they had a confab, a conclave, and said we find that the sun has no effect on climate change. That'd be like the Pope 600 years ago saying, we find that the earth is the center of the universe and the sun orbits the earth. We find the earth is flat. We find the moon is made of Swiss cheese. They actually found that the earth was flat and that the earth was not the, uh, and that the earth was the center of the universe. They didn't find it was made of Swiss cheese, but they might as well. We find at this conference of cardinals that the earth is flat and anyone who says otherwise will be burned at the stake. And the UN says, we find at this meeting that the sun has no effect on the climate of the earth. We said so. It's humans' fault. Pay us taxes. Let us regulate and decide who can have businesses and factories or we'll shut you down. The oceans will rise and everyone will die immediately. <laughs> but but continuing here, uh, blizzard, ice storm, nasty cold weather aimed at Midwest, the east. Uh, they're reporting in the news storm could be one of the worst on record dumping feet of snow. Uh, I was just reading that, the, the, of all things, uh, Midwestern airports are shut down, not just not just eastern airports. All of this is going on. And what does National News report? They have different scientific groups on with no proof, no facts, and they, they can't even say it with a straight face. Uh, if you can't um, see this video because you're listening on the radio, I've asked Kurt and Emma and Paul Watson on Infowars.com and PrisonBunnet.com to post the video uh, that we're about to play. But here's the reporter talking about the record cold weather and everything. And they cut to the so-called scientist who has to contain herself to not laugh, and looks like she's been caught with her hand in the cookie jar. I mean, it looks like when I come around the corner and my son's acting suspicious, and I go, what's going on? I go, what do you got in your pockets? You, you got up in the cupboard and got extra cookies before dinner? And he's like, yeah. I mean, she looks just like my son when I catch him, because he's the only one that can climb all, all the way up the top of the pantry and get the cookies out, where my wife keep, keeps the sweets for treats. I mean, just absolutely guilty of sin, like Sylvester caught with Tweety Bird in his mouth with the feather sticking out. And they just tell us, oh, it's the carbon is driving unnatural weather. Yes, folks, if you read the accounts, there have been times in the colonies and, 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 and times since then when entire rivers that haven't been frozen since have been frozen. There were times where it was so cold in England. Uh, if you go back 350, 400 years ago, they call it the Little Ice Age, where for years the Thames River that hasn't been frozen over since would be frozen as hard as a rock and no ships could come in around the clock, not just in the winter, but a, a, you know for an entire year or more, frozen, frozen solid, because there are many cycles. And even scientists then with their telescopes found a correlation between cold weather and there not being sunspots. Because what are sunspots? When the sun heats up and puts off more radiation, you see sunspots because those are really giant explosions out into space, in some cases tens of thousands of times the size of the Earth. So you better believe when the sun's exploding and, and heating up and shooting off these giant coronal ejections that that's going to affect our weather. But the UN has said it does not affect it. No. And if you pay a carbon indulgence to Al Gore, he will wave his magic pixie wand like Tinkerbell 
and 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 will fix all of the problems because remember under Kyoto, China, India, Mexico, the list goes on and on. Over 160 other countries have to make zero cuts, zero. So where is the industry going to go? They're going to go there where there's not all those taxes. And what? Where do the globalists own and and have the sweetheart deals with the third world dictators? Those third world countries. So their businesses, the globalist factories, get to operate unfettered. And anyone else who doesn't have the inside track, just like with Obama, you don't pay him campaign money, you don't get the waiver on health care. He, he, he waves the magic Al Gore, uh, you know, pixie wand, and, and everything's okay. This is classic brazen tyranny where you've got to lick the boot of the government and pay them the indulgences, and then you're allowed to operate. Okay, so it goes on from there. And I got that confused because I saw a similar CNN clip where they're saying the same thing. That was MSNBC. And you look at her almost laughing the entire time. So the, so the reporter comes in like, boy, you global warming alarmist from the concerned you know, scientist group, uh, you know, you, is this discrediting you? And she's like, no, ha ha, it's uh, the, the carbon is causing more extreme weather. And when they have tornadoes, they get on the local news and say climate change. We've always had tornadoes. There's always extreme climate going on in the thousands of microclimates around the world. There have been so many cases, it's on record, of, 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 of blizzard after blizzard after blizzard after blizzard after blizzard. So you've got to love this spin. They go from three years ago saying we're not going to have snow anymore. You saw the headline, snowless winters. We'll never see another white Christmas in the U.S. Global warming, Al Gore said seven years ago that within... Seven years, and now that time is up, that we would see the sea levels rise and gobble up New York and San Diego and San Francisco. And now he said again last year, again, within seven years, it would happen again. And, and, and no one calls them on it. So now they've shifted. Remember early last year we got an internal memo, the New York Times reported on it, uh, from the White House saying, Nobody's buying global warming anymore. We've got to call it climate change. And that's the new term. And so whatever it is, they can claim that if it gets hotter, it's global warming. You know, if it gets hotter some summer. Or if it gets colder in the summer. Or colder in the winter. Or hotter in the winter. No matter what the weather is, they are going to save you. And we've got to get ready with our budgets, you know, uh, so that we can dig out of the new ice age caused by the global warming. And... Remember the day after tomorrow that came out about a decade ago? They kind of hedged their bets with that movie uh, where the global warming causes a global freeze. So they're really hedging their bets. If you go back to the 70s, John P. Holdren and others in the U.N. said that we were going to have an ice age by 1990. It was going to be devastating because of carbon dioxide. And then that didn't happen. So by the late 80s, they said, no, no, no. Now it's global warming. And then they said, well, people are going to wake up to that. And they said, well, we'll just go ahead and hedge our bets and say no matter what happens, humans did it. Okay, uh, I want to get into the situation with the TSA invades roads and highways with Viper checkpoints. And that report by Paul Joseph Watson is up on Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. If this show acclimates you to the new world order, then it's helping the globalist. But I believe and I know that people can consciously, from an unemotional view, realize what's happening and stand up against it. But if we talk about government plans to push implantable microchips on the elderly, on prisoners for years, and then the media starts actually pushing it, in a way it almost just conditions people to accept it. Even though we don't like it, it becomes a foregone conclusion. And it's the same thing with the TSA. I remember, as I've said 150 times probably, Governor Ridge on C-SPAN in 2002, before Homeland Security even got a cabinet position and congressional funding, saying you're going to have a federal ID card to work, we're going to have federal security guards on every street corner, we're going to have checkpoints, uh, you're going to have an internal passport to travel. And I remember them talking about that. Now they admit with the real ID a few years ago, they tried to threaten the states and said, if you don't implement a federally issued and controlled ID card through the state level, uh, we are going to not let you international parks or get on airplanes. 
So it's the seizure of commerce and travel, the right to be mobile. That's a bedrock keystone or cornerstone uh, to any oppressive system, to any uh, despotism. I mean, it's one of the things they've got to have. And so now we see TSA, PSA saying the TSA can't always be there, but we'll try like at uh, football games. And it shows TSA at uh, a Buccaneers football game and it shows them at hotels and it shows the TSA at malls searching people. And uh, they're at train stations and bus stations. And so they're phasing this in. And it's a violation of the Tenth Amendment. Uh, it's a violation of uh, states' rights. It's a violation of your Fourth Amendment. And Watson has another article of, you know, cops running around in ski masks warrantlessly in Alabama on a highway just pulling people off into a parking lot and searching them. Uh, I, I mean, that's it doesn't take a rocket scientist to know that that's the sign of a banana republic, third world, despotic system. And now Watson has this article uh, where the TSA is announcing... And again, media isn't reporting on this. We're getting this from TSA announcements. We're getting this from trucking companies and getting their drivers ready for it. Uh, where they have mobile x-ray trucks. They're using the Army. We have a link to a Fox News report on that from last year. And they just, in the middle of the country, from Tennessee to New York, from Michigan to California, they'll, they'll have Marines, they'll have Army, they'll have uh, Border Patrol there, and they just... Well, you remember a year and a half ago in Tennessee, th this happened, and the governor said, you can't do that without my permission, and they just said, we're going to do what we want. That's in my film, Police State 4, The Rise of FEMA. Uh, I mean, I mean th this is all going on, and it's not getting a lot of attention, and it's so incredible. I mean, when Hosni Mubarak rolled federal troops out all over Egypt, people went, whoa, that's martial law. They're setting up checkpoints in Egypt. They put an Internet kill switch in Egypt. Oh, my goodness gracious, this is tyranny. But, oh, we're getting an Internet kill switch, and the feds are quietly rolling out and putting up telescreens saying spy on your neighbors. It's no big deal. We've got to point out how this is wrong. We've got to get courts moving against it like they're moving against government health care, like the states and courts are moving against the carbon taxes. It's all illegal. I mean, on its face, it's illegal. TSA invades roads and highways with Viper checkpoints. The TSA has announced its intention to expand the Viper program to include roadside inspections of commercial vehicles, setting up a framework and a network of internal checkpoints, and rolling out security procedures already active in airports, bus terminals, and subway stations. You know, warrantless bags checks to roads and highways across the U.S. And they go on to admit that they will then phase it into general traffic. What are you going to do with your family? You say you won't fly to get away from them? Oh, no. and interesting and thought-provoking. David Ike joins us in the uh, third hour coming up in T-minus 60 minutes. Dr. Sherry Tenpenny will join us for about 25 minutes coming up in the next segment. The latest on uh, the vaccine damage unfolding across the country. But if you just joined us, I'm going to also be getting more into the latest developments, obviously, in the Middle East and North Africa. Uh, as the globalists take credit for what's happening, I'm not even sure if that's true. They may just be trying to maneuver their people uh, into the power vacuum as the people uh, rebel against those Western installed and backed uh, authoritarian uh, oppressive states. But if you just joined us, I was getting into Paul Joseph Watson's article that's up on Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. And it deals with the TSA. Uh, with their open press releases and their announcements, and by the way, this is already going on, uh, TSA invades roads and highways with Viper checkpoints. They've announced uh, the internal checkpoint program to be expanded. Up until now, commercial trucks and other vehicles only were subject to warrantless searches and radiation scans at specially designated state-owned inspection stations, traditionally set up at rest stops next to highways. These internal checkpoints run by Homeland Security, you notice now they're putting up highway barriers, even in rural areas. Um, these internal checkpoints run by Homeland Security, the Department of Transportation, the TSA, involve trucks being scanned with backscatter X-ray devices in the name of safety. And the poor fools out there running them are getting radiated, and they also have the truck drivers drive under them. These inspection stations are now being expanded to normal roads and highways, unleashing an army of TSA agents who will be given a free hand to litter America with internal checkpoints and a chilling throwback to Soviet-style levels of control over the population. 
but the Mexican trucks will be exempt. Inspectors from the Transportation Security Administration, TSA, are likely to be more involved in roadside inspections of commercial vehicles, according to TSA officials, reports the industry website BulkTransporter.com. Quote, Viper teams can be extremely effective, yes, serving as a visible presence that is a random and unpredictable, says William Arrington with the TSA. Viper teams are an essential part of protecting highway transportation vehicles and other critical infrastructure. See, that's how they hire your preachers to spy on you, your doctors, your lawyers, uh, your neighbors. It's all under infrastructure protection while the globalists deindustrialize the infrastructure. The report also notes that Viper team members may or not be in uniform. Oh, now we did a whole other headline. TSA to have secret police or, or uh, 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 plain clothes agents. I mean, this is the spy network. The report also notes that Viper team members may or may not be in uniform, stoking fears about the use of secret police manning checkpoints, which will be more befitting of a Soviet Union or former East Germany. As we've documented, airport security style checkpoints and inspection procedures are already in place at bus terminals, train stations, and are rapidly expanding to the streets of America. And now they have the See Something, Say Something uh, program uh, where they are uh, running around. Uh, I, I, mean, I mean, this is so hard for me to deal with. This is so hard for me to even be able to comprehend that it's happening, even though I've done the research uh, on this information, even though I constantly have studied how other oppressive systems are brought in. And the article goes on. This is such an important story. We have got to get this out to our legislatures especially. I mean, this is a federal illegal globalist seizure of the entire infrastructure and a violation of the Tenth Amendment and the Fourth Amendment of citizens being put through this. And now they're going to be playing close. I want to beg you to get my film on DVD, Police State 4, The Rise of FEMA. Tyranny is here. The grim future foretold in 1984 has become a reality. I want to ask you to get it at Infowars.com, to get the DVD, to give it to your sheriff, your police chief, your county commissioners, your legislatures, your, your members of the House and Senate. People need to see this two-hour film that breaks down the full spectrum of what the globalists are doing. This film is so important. You watch this, you'll understand the full spectrum takeover. It's available at InfoWars.com. You can also watch it in super high quality at PrisonPlanet.tv and download and burn copies to give to others at PrisonPlanet.tv. Visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want.